next little job is a, a little fun one. This is for S.W. Dweeb, who lives somewhere in the wilds of Central America. Uh, sorry, Central North America, I should say. It's a Bitcoin that he did the STL file for. And my good mate, small CNC Lays, he printed it for me. And now we're going to see if we can cast the wretched little thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's an ABS print. And uh, there's, it, the pattern hasn't been sanded or painted or anything. It's just as cast. So it'll be an interesting experiment to see whether we can mould it. Uh, first, we need a decent looking box. Yeah, that one might do it. I hope. That one might be the go, I hope. Some of these boxes I've uh, put a brass bush in there to, to act on the, uh, the pin and these bushes give very good guidance but they do tend to stick a bit, they're a little bit long, so it's stuck there now. But if you lift it right it's not too bad. Okay we'll see how we go. Now for this I've deliberately dampened the facing sand down because that'll make it a bit stronger. Right. Nothing very special going on here at all, really, at the moment. Now I'm going to have to cut this down a little because the part line is uh, halfway up in the uh, pattern. If I don't I'm going to get a lot of edge break away so I'll, I'll cut it down. What I should have done was uh, got a piece of something or other anything that it's about half the thickness of the part cut a hole in at the size of the part and sat it in that and that would have set the parting line up but I only have the one to do at the moment. I don't know that I'm down there yet. I don't like that spoon, it doesn't seem to have the right edge on it. This one might be a bit better. Yes, it is. I think it's sharper. I'm getting close, but it could be a bit more yet. Of a guessing game, this. Ah, that's my guess. It's not too bad.
We'll just have to hope it's right. <laughs> Come on, darling. It might be all right, it's a bit stiffer than I'd like. No, I'll have to clean that up a bit, that's not right. Now we'll try again, I think. Which one was it? I think it was, it's that one, I think. That's better. Well, mostly. <laughs> Get it off the part itself. Okay, now, <clears throat> I won't actually put a feeder on this as such, but I will have what we might call a, a pressure release, if you like, for want of a better term. If you don't have something like this, the metal can hammer into the mould and it can make a bit of a mess. Now, I want a smaller sprue for this job because it's quite small, obviously. There. The sprue's about six millimetre down the bottom there, and we'll bring it over to probably around there, okay. Now we'll cut a decent pouring basin again, this time on this side, I suppose. Notice I always put the, 
the bowl of the basin, the bit I'm going to pour into, close to the edge of the box. That makes it much easier for me to get at when I'm pouring it. Slip this down again. I must make up one of these that fits better. Here we go, it's not too bad. Turn it around, it's probably easy for me to cut this side. The usual, join the dots. The big dot and the little dot. It's not too bad. Might just put a little bit of loose sand down there and blow it around a bit. Yeah, it'd probably help. Radius the sprue edge there and the other edge a little bit. That's better. Break the edge of the top of both of these. Now we find out if this pattern will withdraw from the sand properly. Get rid of some of the rubble here, I think, first. Where's my mocker? mocker? Here we go. Right. We've got to have your hands where the pins are. Right, cross your fingers and hope. Not too shabby at all. That's pulled absolutely perfectly. I'm very, very happy with that. Now, <laughs> Whether the other half will pull like that's another question, of course. <laughs> we'll sit that on the side for the moment. Well, now we may as well start cutting, I guess, the, the various gates and things. Now, one thing I've found over the years is never run metal from a sprue directly into a part. It's sort of asking for trouble. So I'll put the runner here and I'll delicately try and cut a gate here. Boy, this part is so thin. Mm. Of course, I've got to cut another one the other side yet. Okay, that's one side. Now I need to cut one to the, to the pressure relief, as I call it. Uh, as I say, if you don't have this, there's a bit of a chance the metal will actually hammer into there. And I've had castings where, where that has occurred that are as rough as a wire brush. The hammer just pushes the metal right into the sand. That'll do it. Yeah, very, very delicately try and sweep that away. And the same on the other side here. Okay. Right, that's that half done. Now, I need to come down here. Let's cut the half of that gate and let's cut the other half of this one while we're at it. Whoops. All right. Oof, turn that round that way. 
and with the loose sand blowing onto it. Mm, bit deep there. I should really have put this runner in the uh, the drag only. Uh, I've put most of it, sadly, in the uh, cope. I'll put a little bit of it there. Now the runner in this case is much thicker than the part, so it'll actually serve as a feeder for the part. Not that the part needs much feeding, it's that, that thin, it won't, it won't really need any feeding. Now the question is, can we get this one out and how do we do it? Put a bit of a spike in there and delicately tap it, just to loosen it a little bit. Remembering it's quite a delicate beast of a thing. I can believe that I can just see that moving, which is about what I want. And to be honest, the easiest way to get this thing out, grab the box like this. Put your finger on the part, turn the box upside down, remove your finger. I don't think it's quite perfect, but gee, it's close. I think that's not too bad. I think that's not too bad at all. Let's see if we can just clean everything off. It'll be a bit delicate blowing this sort of stuff. Very delicate. <laughs> ah, yes, we can see we've got edges here we've got to get rid of. Here we go. One lot. This will do it. Okay. Not entirely happy with that edge there yet. That might be a bit better. she blows. Now we'll just see how she goes. I don't know whether I'll dry this one or not. I, I might do if I can find enough room in the oven. Uh, maybe I'll dry it. We'll see. Well I'm just about to light up to start the bronze melt and here we have the classic situation. The, the perfect demonstration of how furnaces are never big enough and they're never small enough. It doesn't matter how big or small you build them, you will inevitably come across a situation like this where you only want a little furnace to melt that much metal. Then I will pay a pretty heavy premium here to heat this whole furnace up just to get that little bit of metal right. But similarly, I've also had jobs where this furnace was not big enough. So <laughs> they're like machine tools, furnaces, never small enough and never big enough. But anyway, let's get this uh, show on the road, get some fire in the hole and we'll see what happens. First a bit of blower and we have fuel pressure. Get the right glove here and uh, see and we will be away. Oh boy, that crucible's small compared to that furnace. Bit of air, a bit of fuel. Fire in the hole.
That'll do for a start. I guess because of the size of the furnace and the temperature I've got to get to, it'll take me close to an hour to melt this, but we'll see. Time to add some metal. Watch your feet. Watch your feet. Ooh, that is heavy. <laughs> Can't quite get where I want to go. Right, we've got it. It's not good. One. Four. Faster, 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 faster. One. That's better. Got that call better. And that one's not too bad. Okay. And there we go. I'll just get some, uh, made the gloves on. And we'll break these out. They're still glowing pretty red there. Wow, are they ever. <laughs> Lovely golden colour this stuff has. Beautiful. Oh, where's my tongs? Here. Right, let's see what SW's Bitcoin looks like. <clears throat> oh, I don't think that's too bad. There's a bit of loose sand in it, unfortunately. I don't know where that came from, but... a bit warm. <laughs> I think that won't be too bad, Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry, I think that'll be okay. A bit warm. He's no, he's not getting it. <laughs> but he gets showing it. The uh, the Bitcoin seems to have worked all right, although it's <laughs> it's a bit of a terrible looking colour. I've scrubbed it with a wire brush and I think it's picked up dirt off the wire brush. But it's it's not too bad, I suppose really considering it's quite fine detailed it's got a very sharp impression a little bit of loose grain in this one over here 
that edge there broke away because of how I took it out of the mould. But that edge where I took it out of that side, where I took it out of the mould properly, that's much better. But it needs a bit of a polish up. I wonder if a bit of steel wool will do it. Let's we'll try it. See what happens here. Well, let's make it look a little better, I think. Yeah, I think that's looking a bit better now. A little bit of luck. This side a bit more. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Amazing how you can see every one of the 3D printing lines in it. I hope the camera can pick them up. Anyway. Here, here we are with the original 3D print. Ha! Get them around the same way, I suppose. We could, couldn't we? There, it's the original 3D print. And same there. Shouldn't be too bad, I hope, with a bit of luck. Right, a little update on the, the, Bitcoin, the Bitcoins for Perry. Um, here's the original 3D printed pattern. It's just as printed. There's been no smoothing, no painting, no anything done on that. I've just moulded it in my normal facing sand. Here's the resulting Bitcoin that we got. Now, it's fairly thin. Um, and of course, it's obviously thinner inside where it's where it's relieved down. Um, you can see the the 3D printing lines within it, and the casting is not too bad. It's not perfect by any means. There there are some little problems with it. Um, there's a little bit of loose grain right there, and I've caught the edge. This is the side that came that I dropped out of the mould. And that's not really a clever way of doing it. As a result, it's just caught the edge around there and pulled a bit of the mould away. It's also done it a little bit in there and I think a little bit up there. But the other side, Perry's uh, avatar side, we don't have anywhere near that sort of defect because here I lifted the mould off it and the particular boxes I used have got very, very good guidance. Um, but all in all, I'm considering this, for a first try, a bit of a success. And again, if you look, you can see the 3D printing lines. That facing sand of mine's picked all of that sort of stuff up. And this very thin raised edge around here, it's quite difficult to get that thing to cast in a, in a low permeability sand like mine. And I cheated a bit, if you could call it a cheat, in that I dried the whole mould so that there was no moisture in the sand. And this allows the, uh, the metal to run very uh, nicely, very fully into, into the, uh, the mould. If I didn't do that, there might have been a little bit of steam pressure build up and stop the metal running into these areas here. But all in all, I'm not unhappy with this job for a first off. Uh, I'll now have to give the coin back to my um, seven-year-old grandson who's decided suddenly that it's his and he said to me, Grandpa, if you lose this, I will get very mad. So I thought, well, I'd better not lose it, had I?